Hi, I'm Greg Eulen with Reynolds & Reynolds, and this is Connected. Today I get to talk with Cliff Banks, founder of Autovate and the Banks Report. Cliff, thanks so much for uh, taking time off the floor and sitting there, I guess, standing and talking. Great, great to be here again. Yep, absolutely. So um, let's start, actually, I mentioned Autovate, and uh, it seems like it wasn't too long ago. Um, probably, a, a, from everything that I heard, a, a great show. So tell me about that a little bit, um, how it was, and, and uh, how that's that's going for you. Yeah, well, you know, we focus, uh, the, the event focuses on uh, M&A activity and investment in the automotive retail space. So we bring together investors, investment banks, CEOs, tech companies such as Reynolds & Reynolds, and uh, uh, entrepreneurs and startups uh, at the end of the year in December to discuss the industry. It's a, it's a Q&A format, which, is, uh, which plays well. It creates a, you know, we created an environment in which there's a lot of conversations. It's not really, a, it, it, there aren't presentations or right. speeches. It's, it's just Q&A and a lot of downtime for people to talk about deals and yeah. talk about the future of the industry. That's great. That's great. Yeah, it seems like it's been uh, growing in, in popularity in recent years. So, well, you know, we've uh, yeah, we're growing it slowly and methodically, and just honing that uh, the, uh, the the model essentially, yeah. because you know it's uh, uh, that there are a lot of conferences in this space, and and I think they're all needed. They each fill a niche and serve a need. But you know, so I, I'm trying to you know, I was trying to figure out and learn how to how to position it and provide the best content and the best, uh, create the best conference you know, in that space. Yeah, that's great, that's great. So what, um, I guess, kind of what's what's new from your perspective? You're, you're always, uh, seems like the one with, with all the information before anybody else. So what have right. you been hearing? What's what's new? What's kind of maybe one or two of the hot topics? Yeah, well, obviously the, uh, you know, the show floor coming into NEDA, the hot topic has been among the vendors, the customer data platform. Yep. So uh, uh, dealers are looking at it. I've talked to a couple yesterday. They're looking hard and seeing what it entails and what it means. And yeah. so I think that as we, you know, over the next year or two, we'll see, uh, we'll see that message and that model really get uh, get uh, crafted yeah. and, and sharpened. So, mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's uh, I think it's a needed. Uh, development because as we're moving into the connected vehicle right. phase, you know, I think dealers need to be able to uh, to access their data, their customer data platforms in a way that they haven't been able to before. Yeah. Well, but I think something too to, to build on that that's that's going to be really important going forward is certainly the platform and the data and the cleansing and, and you know, yeah. single source and sure. uh, all of that matters, right. but what do you do with it? Right, well, that's so. a, that, and that is what I was saying. I think over the next year or two, we're going to see that th that concept get sharpened yeah. in terms of what do we do with this? Why is it important? And that's what the dealers are looking for right. too. I mean, right. I you know certainly had you know one of the dealers yesterday that I talked to said that uh, you know, he was questioning: Is this necessary? Uh, you know, what, what are we uh, what are we looking to get out of this? Right. So the, the, as, as we put. And as folks like you put that message and build these solutions, you know, that I think, uh, you know, we're, we're, I'm going to be looking to you guys yeah. and to others to, uh, you know, to help shape that message. Yeah, and I, I'm excited to see, I, I see, I think, two paths that will okay. end up being taken. I see one that is kind of a self-managed path, and I see right. one that's a, okay. that's a fully managed right. path, like we've right. seen with other products in the yes. past, right? Yes. But you have, you're going to have some subset of dealers that uh, are going to want to have a marketing staff that, that basically uses a tool like right. that for targeting right. and creating customer experiences, and then you're going to have others that um, they would rather hire uh, an agency or vendor, sure. or whatever term right. you want to use, right. Um, right. To, to deliver all that. Right, so, right. And there's some development work that needs to be, uh -huh. you know, that, that, that is going to be part of that. You know, we're seeing the automakers do something similar in terms of the connected vehicle platforms. We just right. saw during CES, Stellantis announced that they're building out a platform. GM is going to be launching some vehicles this year on their Ultify platform. And it's somewhat of a similar concept, I think, you know, taking that data from the vehicle, but it's also involving customer data too. So, uh, and that's one of the developments, I think, over the rest of the decade that and I think you get, you, you know, Reynolds and others are going to be right in the middle of in that conversation with the automakers is how to leverage that data in the vehicle yeah. 
to better enhance that customer experience. Yeah, and, and as the car becomes even more integrated in the lives right. of people, I mean, I see a, a world and, and it can't be too far away where um, we don't have a phone in our pocket anymore, right? Just everything that we touch Very becomes well. the phone, yes. right? So, yeah, if, so you get into your car right, right. and you don't need your phone to right. get directions, you don't need your phone to pay for things, you don't need right. your phone to call somebody. Um, it's just a part of right. the car. And so when that happens, then all of that information from the car right. becomes the ownership experience, right. right? And it becomes data that can, right. can pull back in. And I think, you know, we talked about this a little bit last year when we did the podcast too, just in terms of how that is going to fundamentally change the relationship between the manufacturer and dealers. And I'm not talking in a bad way. Right. I think it could increase the collaborative approach. And the manufacturers and dealers who are able to come at it from that perspective mm -hmm. are going to win out in the end because they're going to really be able to create experiences that will knock your socks off, in my yeah. opinion. I mean, we, you, know, you talk about the, the vehicle being able to talk to us verbally, letting us know when it needs new front brakes, and by the way, ABC Motors has a slot open at 5.30 p.m. Would you like right. to set an appointment? And just the things you could do with that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and, we're, and we're getting to that point now, so. It'll be interesting too to see if the manufacturers go all in on that or if they partner with, with others to do it. Well, that's, that is the, uh, uh, that's the big question. Right. And obviously, uh, you know, there's some big names out there that I think are, and, and I think you guys are going to be in the middle of that conversation too. But, uh, but the tech landscape, you know, by the end of the decade, could look considerably different than what it does today. Yeah, yeah, it'll be, it, right. it's, you know, it's always fun, but yes. uh, it, it'll be a fun, right. Right. Uh, fun few years, that's for yes. sure, that's yeah. for sure. So what else, what else are you hearing? Um, you know, this time of year, it's always, you know, you have, you kind of wrap up the year, you go into the year, we had an NADA in January, so it's, it's beginning of the year, a lot of excitement. A um, little, maybe a little hesitation on some fronts too, but I don't know what yeah. else you're hearing. Well, it, it, yeah, it's, uh, uh, one, I think there's um, obviously an era of uncertainty that we are really right in the middle of, and I was writing about this five years ago that as we were entering it, uh, you know, there's, there's a mix, there's a lot of optimism. Mm -hmm. I think some of the hesitation though is coming from maybe people that haven't really lived through this. Yeah. I, uh, you know, you read some of the social media, you read some of the headlines regarding used cars, regarding the, loan status and loan defaults and loans getting to 84 months or beyond right, and, right. and people start pulling their hair out or thinking oh predicting this is the collapse of the used car industry and this is going to be horrible listen this industry is a uh, over 100 years old and there's nothing we have i mean all right maybe we never saw covid or pandemic before but we the fact now. is we know as an industry we know how to manage and adapt in any situation whether the Interest rates are sky high or zero percent. We know whether how to operate when there's no inventory on the ground or when there's a thousand cars yeah. on the ground. There's, I, I'm not, I don't lose sleep over that stuff. So there's a lot of noise out there, but this, I mean, and this year is going to be an interesting year. But, but, but this industry, we'll figure it out. There's no, we'll, we'll be fine. Do you remember a, a year that it wasn't an interesting year, right? Like, yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> it's never true. just been I mean, this smooth. Just, yeah, like, yeah. I, you know, I was, well, I think. Uh, Maybe the years between uh, two thousand, you know, between two thousand and ten, maybe two thousand and eleven and two thousand and nineteen. Yeah, that kind of know, fifteen but, to nineteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was just yeah, where yeah. it was like you know we, we were doing seventeen million units a year and everything yeah. was going in our minds swimmingly and then you know, right. obviously you know, but then the last two years how you know taking the pandemic out of the picture, I mean the profitability in, in the business case has been phenomenal. Absolutely, yeah. It's been it's been you know fun to fun to kind of work through and, and help out right. and be a part of. And uh, to your point, there's there's definitely challenges. There always are, but uh, sure. they're they're fun to solve, right? Yeah, true, true. But we have the playbooks. I mean, so yeah. you know, uh, I think the two big questions though facing uh, facing our industry are uh, certainly the EV question, and there's so many questions associated with that. Uh, you know, will the, will the customer buy or won't they buy? Will prices come down? You know, is someone going to develop a breakthrough battery technology? Right. You know, uh, and, and those are questions that we just, we don't know what, we know what we're going to be going through. And I'm not saying going through in terms of a, uh, in terms of, a, you know, a tunnel or whatever, but mm -hmm. a transition. And really over the next five to 10, maybe 15 years, 
and we don't know what it looks like on the other side of this, what, of this transition. Right. So you have the EVs and you have the connected vehicles. Yeah. And those two questions really can fundamentally change our industry. I mean, just think about it in terms of creating residual values and valuations of vehicles. Really, truly, you're driving a, you drive a connected, truly software-defined vehicle off the lot, and six months later, it could be a considerably different vehicle yeah. because of software updates. Sure. So how do you place evaluation on that? And it could be a better vehicle. Right. Right. And then, it, you know, and then if the OEMs are able to execute on some of their, I think, wild projections of revenue in terms of, you know, connected vehicle, and we're hearing $25, $30 billion, you know, that's, that's pretty ambitious, you know. But if they're able to execute on some of that, you know, it's, it does change the, change the game. But again, this industry, I, I, dealers will always, I think, will always be part of the picture. But I think there's going to be a lot of evolution, a lot of change. Yeah. yeah and, and I mean, really, not to overuse it, but opportunity. Yes, right? I mean, true. There, yeah, there really true. Is, it's, that's the one thing that I think stands out to me is the ability for dealers to find and create value. Right. 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 So you, you don't sell something if there's not value in it. True. So, true. so dealers over you know, the, the last hundred years, to your point, have found ways to create value for both right. the consumer and the manufacturer and executed really, really right. well. But Greg, I will say this though. It would not surprise me in the least if 10, 15 years from now, we're not saying you're having the same conversation. I, honestly, I mean, I, sometimes things do change slowly and sometimes yeah. the changes. If you remember five, six years ago, all the talk was autonomous driving. People were making some wild projections yeah. about privacy is going, or uh, ownership, private ownership's going away. Uh, every, you know, our kids that are eight years old aren't going to need driver, driver's right. licenses. And we saw how quickly that fell. So, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe the EV revolution doesn't happen. Right. You know, I mean, maybe it's just 10, 20 percent of the market. We don't know. You're right. right. You're right. Could be. Good deal. Well, Cliff, I could talk to you for uh, I know. For we hours could stay days, here all day. But, yes. <laughs> uh, but I know you got about, but you know, probably this is Sunday. You probably got, I think you said all, all day meetings today. Yeah. Too, yeah. So. They're, yeah. One right after the <laughs> other. So good deal. Well, anything else you want to touch on before we, uh, before we wrap anything we didn't talk about that we should? Uh, well, I just will say this about the industry. I mean, it's great being back in any day. Dallas is a new, uh, is a new wrinkle. It's a, it's a nice touch. Uh, but the uh, vibrancy and the energy on the show floor and at the various meetings and uh, different uh, parties and receptions have been, uh, you know, it's been, it's been great. So 100% agree. Yes. Well, thank you very much for talking as always. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll catch up again soon. Yes. Great. Great. Right. Thank you. Thank you.